499 founding of Orvabad. Scenes from Osgara. Circle of Fire. 29th of first winter, 499 founding of Orvabad. As it ended, so it began, with nothing. An infinitesimally minuscule spark erupted in that darkness between mind, body and soul, and from nothing, something was woven. It painted in flames, it drew with fire upon a blank canvas of an abyssal void devouring. With every stroke it offered a note, a dulcet tapestry of a harmonious melody emerged from its embers, a celebration of life, but with an undertone of lamentation. Must I be, only to undo, then ultimately come undone? An innocent voice asked from the midst of the crescendo of fire, then the spark exploded into every vast direction, leaving behind red embers joining to give the voice a form. Until my will be done, until the seven have become one. From the red embers, a body of fire was created, then encapsulated in a familiar form. But the body could not fully contain the brewing cauldron of malice and rage. Strands of fire and blood erupted from its head, creating a long red mane of hair. Even the eyes dripped with fire as a reddish velvet flame engulfed the body leaving a woman floating aimlessly, still laced with uncertainty. Will I then be free? She asked, and in response, the melody morphed into violence. Nebulas retracted from her, celestial clouds and stardust spun forcefully around her, countless collisions roused a latent murderous intent within her. There was pain and cold, there was torment and burning, then there was silence. A warm, white blanket engulfed her, soothing in its touch, smooth and serene upon her turbulent mind, and the same melody that played earlier changed. Voices that were achingly familiar were woven onto that white blanket, and they all sang in a choir of stardust around her. She is already free. The white blanket etched upon itself images of people similar to her, yet different at the core and they all called to her as the blanket protected her from the wrath of a thousand million searing suns. The only burning left came from within, from sparks within her flame-engulfed heart, from ashes clouding her ember-addled soul. Freedom is a choice that needs be made. The stars proclaimed, And choose the old shall. The blanket offered. Then the woman screamed, she grabbed at her hair, she tore out the strands of fire, she screamed and thrashed and lit herself ablaze. In so doing, she burnt her blanket and all the faces offered upon it. Their voices faded, giving way to her torment, fueling it. Then, as if the choice itself tore her apart, as if the more she understood the choice, the more it frightened her, and the more she craved, she had never been free to choose at all. She herself erupted, destroying everything around her. The stars fell silent, her embers scattered, and as it began, so it ended. With nothing, stillness, silence, entropy. Then her eyes opened, and she shot up in her bedroll on the ground in a tent, and she was sweating. She threw aside her covers and left her tent, Arms wrapped around herself as she emerged into a pitch black night, lit only by countless stars overhead. Why must I suffer these meaningless frights of night? She paused as a cold wind blew into her, making her rub her hands together for warmth. But the longer she stood there, outside in the open field, the warmer she felt. Warmth? She asked herself, then opened her palm to see light upon it. She tilted her head upwards to the sky and stars overhead and she could see something drawn in the stars above that she had never seen before. A white cloth wrapped around their world in the form of these stars. She trembled at the sight above, and something drew her hands upwards, reaching for stars she knew she would never find. Then she blinked, and she thought she saw her hands burn. She blinked again and the sky was dark. Once more she plunged into an abyss. Once more, she was left to contend with endings and beginnings and her circle of fire.